This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 14th, 2019, and what a great day today. Also, would you please subscribe and hit the bell button so you can get our future updates. And if you'd like, make a comment below each video. Vegas, what a day today. Okay. Oh my gosh. I don't even know where to start. Like, if I could talk about 20 tickers today, I probably would, but um, we want to keep it short and simple because, you know, Jim... He likes to keep it short and simple, which keeps you all focused. So let's just really talk about the ones that were hot um, today. And uh, for sure, MBOT will be one that we talk about. We're going to talk about CGC, NBEV. We're going to talk about BIOC. We're going to talk about TLRY. And then I have a little bonus at the end. So um, you need to listen, though, to get it. So the first one is uh, MBOT. And boy, oh boy, that was actually fabulous news, okay? So MBOT, as you guys know, um, there was news on the stock this morning. And the news was that they validated the effectiveness of this product called the self-cleaning shunt. So it's called the SCS in an in vitro lab study. So they were able to show images of, I guess, the um, product being used. And uh, what they did was this study was conducted at in Vijo DRS Israel, who is actually a provider of non-clinical contract research services and research models. So the study actually started in October 2018. And actually after 30 days, um, it actually did show significant cell growth. It showed that the company's SCS, which is this trademark, this shunt product, has the ability to operate after cells had accumulated on the catheter hole of, and the robotic brush. And um, this is really, really good news. Um, so, you know, you guys know, I don't know if you guys know who Vigo is, but in Vigo, has like 3,300 people. They're in like 65 countries. They actually get provide comprehensive scientific expertise and also offer um, non-clinical research and research models and services um, to various uh, companies in the biotech. And Microbot, as you know, Mbot uh, became a company listed on the markets back in 2016. You know, and they really provide in uh, micro robotic medical technologies and also artificial uh, lumens within the human body. So they're a, a really good company. I like Mbot. Uh, what a crazy run. Now, I do want to say that earlier in the day, I mean, we saw that this was a low float. And, uh, you know, one of the things we did mention on voice, I mean, you know, this is not you know, it's hard to type everything when there's a lot of action going on on stocks. So we did mention earlier in the day that, you know, this stock, don't be surprised if this can even go over the five. And then once we saw this continue and go to six, seven, eight, we even started talking about, you know, potential of even a $10 stock. And that if it really got to $10, I mean, we would probably see a lot of new buyers stepping in. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim and explain the action on the chart. I apologize for that little noise because my dog is scratching the desk. Jim, over to you. Now, this was a beautiful trade today. We called it right out of the gate this morning. It started moving up, and we noticed that the low float on this was 1.85, which was a real good catalyst. So I think we were breaking that rotation right out of the gate. So we followed it up with the 50 SMA. There's a couple times where it touched. I mean, a, a good trader could have been in and out of this many a times today. But it was just so easy to call. It was just too easy to call. And I, I just, you know, I was stunned about how strong it was today and how it just kept going up and up. And the pullbacks were easy to call also. It followed this 50 SMA and run back to the 20. And then it kept just going on up and found a new, another channel and busted back down and hit that 100 SMA again, which was a previous high earlier the day, which I have pointed indicated right here. And it just kept on running, kept on running. And people were, and a lot of rooms weren't trading this. You know, they get too scared and they don't understand, 
when you got good news and you got good volume and you got a low floater, all them three factors right there can really move a stock. And really, I mean, really move it good. And so we kept calling it out, man. I got out at $9 and just gave myself a rest. But here we closed up after hours to 11.60 and we pulled back. I'm definitely keeping Mobot on my watch list for tomorrow and the rest of the week. This was my play of the day, Mobot. And the next one we're going to discuss is some three stocks that are in the pot sector. CGC, Tillery, and InBev. I don't know what order. We'll see what Vegas wants to talk about first. <laughs> well, you know what? I do want to talk about uh, CGC. And the reason I want to talk about that one is because that had news uh, later in the day. And I don't know if some of you heard it or saw it. I mean, I was just so busy watching and bought that, um, you know, thank goodness we have such a great teamwork in the room. Uh, very grateful. Uh, one of our members, uh, Sam, he mentioned, you know, Canopy Growth has news. And I said, oh, my gosh, let me take a look. And there it was. And the news came out at 2.05 in the afternoon. And the news was that they plan to build the first U.S. hemp plant in New York State. They plan to spend actually $150 million, up to $150, to build this plant. And um, it's going to be the first production facility in the U.S. And don't forget, you know, this is a Canadian company. And, for, you know, I was thinking, like, of all places to pick, why'd they pick New York? I mean, the real estate, they're so expensive. But that's the place they picked. They actually were granted a license by New York to process and produce the hemp. And they plan to establish an industrial park, a hemp industrial park in the state focused on extraction and product manufacturing. So, uh, you know, Bruce Linton was really pleased. He said he applauds the political leadership at the federal state uh, level and has allowed today's announcement to actually become reality. They actually plan to invest, as I mentioned, up to $150 million at the New York operation. And this is another example of the strategic advantage. But don't forget, Constellation Brands, as you guys remember, gave um, Canopy Growth a four, like they gave them $4 billion investment. So, I mean, look what they're doing with the money. So um, the other thing too, uh, and this is what you guys need to keep in mind. Okay, so write this down in your calendar. You know, Canopy Growth is also looking at some other sites in the New York area, and they will plan to announce the new another location probably in the next 100 days is what they did mention in this PR. So this is not the first and this is not the last that we're going to hear of Canopy Growth. Um, so Jim's going to talk about the chart, but I got to say that as soon as I heard the news, you know, I'm really... Uh, very focused on really trying to help people with smaller accounts uh, because you know people have a large account you know they can jump into any and that's great I'm happy to hear that and you know what they deserve it I mean they've worked hard they have so you know kudos to those bigger traders but I really try to help um, the people that have a smaller account you know a lot of people could not afford to buy canopy growth I mean how many shares can they get 10 20 I mean there's only so much they can get when it was already in the $38 range and it actually had hit, um, you know, 40. So right away, as soon as this news came out, the first thing I did, I said, let's look at some option calls on canopy growth. And one of our uh, members, Rich mentioned, you know what, I'm gonna look at the $45 calls and those were going for 48 cents. And even though we weren't even touching $5 on canopy growth news, I mean, the option call went from fit, uh, his 48 cent or 50 cent entry went over 100%. He was thrilled. Um, I gave the option call on the $39.50 call firing on Friday. I alerted it at uh, basically 177 and uh, got filled at 181. Uh, happy that the option went to over $4. Uh, people sold it in the threes. I mean, people making money left, right, and center, especially those smaller account traders. They love that because they were able to make $200. And their goal for some of these traders is even $100 a day or $200 a day. So even with that tiny little option trade, they didn't even have to hold it that long. I think it was under half an hour. They made the money. 
the chart was bullish and you know what congrats to them so jim over to you because the option trade was great and i'm sure the charts look good so let's hear about it because you've been talking about this canopy growth for weeks yep and for months for months i've been oh, yeah. bullish on months this sector ago. for more over six months now and i've oh, been yeah. watching this market for over 15 years so I'm, I'm telling you that I, I, I just flabbergasted on how this sector is starting to turn out now. So I'm pulled up a year's chart here, and you see we've had a highs up here around 59.25. Well, back a couple weeks ago, I called this out at $26. I said, this thing's going to run to 40. And look, we hit that $40 mark today. We hit it yesterday. We hit the high yesterday, so I hit my target. In a matter of two weeks, called it out in the room, and this thing can go a lot higher. And when I heard the news, I started saying, "Well, it's going to go to 41.73, and it has a possibility of maybe running to 43.30." And these trend lines are all extended. I haven't added a trend line from the last run we had, when we were down here at 25 dollars again, and it ran all the way up to about 55. And then we had that high, so it, it got a real nice resistance on this. And Vegas brought up New York. Well, Como's wanting to legalize marijuana in New York City, and that's one of the biggest, heaviest populated cities in the country. And I guarantee probably half that city gets high. So this is a great market and a great state for them to get started to bring their brand down here to open up. And, you know, kudos for New York. You'll you'll have first first. First, uh, what do you say? Uh, first dabs, <laughs> dabs, get it. Uh, <laughs> so this is CGC. I think we got a lot more room. I mean, we're overextended right now from 30 bucks to 42. It wouldn't be a bad idea if it pulled back, but this sector is going to have momentum. I hope it stays for the rest of the year with us. And you know, we keep, we keep talking about this sector, but this is a sector that I really do believe it will beat the dot-com era during the Clinton years and that gave him a great economy so we've got we've got a good economy going on right now one of the best in the world uh, GB GDP's up there around four percent jobs are down at 3.7 people are working again and we'll just go to the next one right after this and this is another one we called uh, which one uh, you want to do Tillery or InBev uh, no we can do do NBEV. Okay. Okay, so, um, you know, NBEV, you know, they make, uh, you know, they're in the beverage business. And I think they're at a show, too. I think they're at a food show um, showcasing some products. I believe they're at the specialty food show. Um, and that's uh, coming up. Uh, I think it starts tomorrow. So I think they're there. Uh, but anyways, aside from that, uh, I just want to mention, you know, with NBEV, you guys know, I mean, there's been so much insider buying. I mean, I had to do a double take. Um, and the reason I'll tell you why is because, you know, back in August, you know, NBEV insiders um, were purchasing the stock. And then when I went to revisit the prices that they paid, they paid a dollar twenty eight to a dollar thirty. And, you know, the one that interests me the most really was uh brent willis and who's the ceo and i like ed brennan as well he's a director and i mean they both purchased over a million shares i mean brent really loaded up and uh they both bought around um you know uh brent bought about 128 and then prior to that he bought it back in may and paid a lot more but boy they took advantage of the dips those insiders and i said to jim oh my god I think they paid 128. Can you just confirm that that was the right price of Enbev back in August? And he said, "Let me check the chart." And oh my gosh, was he right? Enbev was a dollar 28 back then. And look at Enbev today. I mean, this is like a 700% gainer. I mean, unbelievable. And Jim, you tell us about that. And I just want to mention before you talk about the chart I mean, we saw that at, we were already bullish on MBEV for a while, and we noticed the action on Friday, and we already discussed uh, option trades on MBEV. I mean, we called $6 calls that expire this Friday, and uh, we called um, option calls that expire Friday for $6.50.
and those were cheap. I mean, those were like 25 cents and 40 cents. And you know what? People are making over 200% on the option calls. And I mean, we're not talking like huge money. I mean, somebody that would put $40 in an option trade, you know, now that contract's worth um, $120. But you know what? That's, you know, good money for like, you know, someone with a small account that would have put $40 let's say on Friday, and today your 40 becomes 120. I mean, I'd be thrilled. So again, for smaller accounts, this is a very good strategy, and we're very happy with that. So Jim, tell us about that NBEV chart. Well, NBEV, your chart here, we had a year high of my resistance right around 893. Uh, we called this stock under right around here, around 350. Here a couple months ago, I've been very bullish on this stock for over five months now, four months. And like I said, this is my sector. And it's, every day it's had real good volume. I mean, we had a little slow period down there when the market was selling off. But, you know, look at it now. We're sitting back here. We broke past resistance. And I'm going to pull up a 20-day chart just to show you what's happened in the last 20 days. We called this low support down here around under five bucks. I said it's a bargain right now and then we had that dip to 470 if anybody saw that bingo but that five dollars was my support level and now we're in an upward wedge we broke out of it pre-market but then I was yelling in the room you know this thing's dipping it's out of my wedge it's time to buy it run up and it hit that 50 SMA and then we had the big bounce here from my my support level I had it six dollars see that's another confirmation when this pulled down to the 50, it hit it run right into my, my support level, which was an old resistance. When a stock breaks out, gets in a channel, see this channel? We took two or three days to kind of hover around, and today we had the big breakout. The volume spike included. And then we're now we're pulling back just an itty bitty bit, but not much. I mean it bounced up after hours. Uh 697 up to a whole buck <laughs> I mean hallelujah and let me look at let me look at the daily one minute and I'll show you how we played it here's my little channel that I had right here of the wedge and it came up and it broke out of that wedge pulled back to it hit the 200 SMA we had a golden cross and it bounced on up here the second half of the day more or less three quarters of the day and then we had a big knife here at the end of the day for another opportunity to jump in at that seven buck area, which was a resistance at one time, which now became a support. And then we bounced back up here to 728. So this is one you want to keep on watch. I'm very bullish on this stock. Play the pullbacks on it. Uh, this beverage company is really expanding hugely. They're wanting to get into the CBD market, but we just have to give them a little bit more time. And we're just bullish on this stock. And then this next one we're going to talk about is Tillery. Vegas? Okay, so uh, which one do you want me to talk about now? Tillery. Oh, well, Tillery, I mean, that's your baby. I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no news on that. I mean, you know, you've been bullish on this one too. So you can just read it. go right ahead and jump into the chart because I don't really have anything new to report on Tillery at all uh i think tomorrow i thought they were going to present something at this food show but i don't think so i'm going to let you just go ahead and talk about the chart okay well there's tomorrow i think tomorrow oh you know what tomorrow they do tomorrow they are presenting oh my god uh just to let you know tillery does have um a 1 30 p.m eastern standard time conference they will be having a live webcast um, and you guys can check it out. I don't know what they're going to talk about at all. So we will have to tune in and see what that's all about. Uh, live presentation tomorrow on a webcast. Yeah, so if you're were... interested, you can go to the website, T-I-L-R-A-Y.com. Go there at 1.30 and you can click to the webcast and see what, what they want to present. Yeah, they have a pre presentation tomorrow. Oh, that's what you're talking about, that webcast thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's all. And, the, yeah. and then they also were at a conference here um, on the 10th. Yeah, but that was last week. Yeah. But that's just added added uh, sediment catalyst for yeah, the stock. Yeah, sure I'm, uh, I'm not sure if they're going to announce something from having gone to that conference. I have no idea. 
Yeah. Right. Yep. So but, here's. Yeah. Here's the chart. Um, I called this sucker when it was down here. Let me put a 20 day chart on it. And I've been very bullish on this from when it ran all the way up to 300 some bucks. To, and here's your daily yearly chart where it ran to 300 and pulled back. And I was calling this out. And I said $100 was support. And then we had that sell off down to 64. And then I got a wild hair up, up my nostril here saying, we're going to take this up to 100 bucks. And that's what happened. We took it to a hundred bucks, and I'm going to sh bring this up to 20-day hourly, hourly, <laughs> hour. And uh, so we went from at 68 in a matter of one, two, three, four, five, six days. In the last two days, it's really jumped up pretty good. So we closed again at a hundred dollars. That's where I like that resistance at. Anything below it, if you can get down to 95 or down here to 91 open my eyes up to get back into it again and if we we did get break we got up here to 106 and had a resistance up right around 100 100 right there little resistance level right there so we pulled back to 100 i'm bullish on tillery because there's a lot of huge investors in this stock it's it's you know it's a high dollar trade there's better plays out there but this is one that you can get in and get out and and if it jumps five or six bucks, 10 shares, you know, or 20 or 30, you can, you can bundle it for a small account. You can bundle up some pretty good little simple cash. And that's Tillery. And then we got one that Vegas wants to talk about. It's, its name is BIOC. Yeah, so, you know, BIOC, I mean, I, I, mean, I honestly, there was no news on the stock. And, uh, you know, some people... I don't know. Everyone has a different interpretation of what they think, but Biosept, you know, I heard this on scanners. I, I kind of saw it like forming a little bit of a wedge. And then I said, you know what? I'm not really crazy about this volume. Let me look at the chart and see if I was to take this trade, like where would I want to take it? And at the time, you know, um, the, the stock was at about $1.15. And so when I looked at the chart, I said to myself, you know, and I was talking to the room, I'm looking at the chart and I was talking to them. And I said, you know, guys, I'm not in love with the volume here and I'm not in love with the weekly either. I said, uh, you know, if you're going to look to trade the stock, I said, I'd wait for the break of the 125 and uh, let's see if it goes to 126 as an entry because I wanted to see some support at the 50 day level. And then if it did get the volume coming in there a little bit uh, where, you know, where it has the 50 day uh, support, uh, my next resistance at the time was, you know, 139. And then that's kind of how I left the trade. Like I, you know, I gave the entry idea, kind of gave where the next resistance would be. And then I, you know, was, took my eyes off it and went and focused on, you know, I was, into, I was watching MBOT, right? And, uh, you know, I kept watching BIOC. It was moving, you know, kind of slow. And then I got to tell you, all of a sudden, the thing ripped. Like, it went to, like, 185. And I was like, holy crap, what's happening? And then the stock got halted, and I saw it at, like, 224. And then I wasn't sure what was going on. And to be honest, I can't even explain why it did that. And I'll turn it over to Jim, and he can talk about the chart. But, I mean, I didn't see any news. Did you? Uh, no, just the the last news I saw was that they uh, they, they entered a partnership, applied artificial intelligence, in order to help pharmaceutical and life science companies optimize commercialization of biomaker targeted therapeutic in oncology or whatever that is. And I'm not real big on big words, so that don't mean much to me much. But I still like to keep up on the news and to see what happened well today it popped up on the scanner and i heard it first thing this morning and, and mentioned it to you know kind of just said okay it popped up on the scanner in the room and then all of a sudden it consolidated and i'm going to pull up a 10 day 30 minute well at least i'll just pull up the daily one minute and this is about when it popped on the scanner probably about a, oh, 45 minutes into the trading day and it ran here from a low number of right around 92 cents all the way up to 130 and then it consolidated the rest of the day but man we were so involved in today was just a magnificent day to be in the market 
everything was running. Uh, I think my pet worm could have, worm as in W-O-R-M, could have probably made a play today on my <laughs> keyboards. But she bounced on up to 130 and consolidated down here to support level, which was right around my favorite numbers when a breakout happens, right around 115. And then all of a sudden, I'm here in Vegas going crazy, going nuts, and, well, what's going on? What's going on? You know, and I'm, well, she bounced up. She bounced up to three bucks from that 126 area. Just all of a sudden, it got halted and just boomed on up. And and we were telling people in the room, man, get out. Take your profit. Even on the first halt, we were saying, just, you know, after this halt, and it just kind of gained strength and bounced on up to that 280 area that I had as a resistance. And I didn't draw any of these trend lines. These were already here from my extended trend line pattern. Well, we pulled on back to the 50, bounced off the 50, Kind of gave up. I see a little resistance right here. And then come back and hit that 100. And here we are, after hours, back at 240 again. So there's something going on with this stock. It's just not because it bounced up. There's something. It's a low float, too. I mean, the float on this thing is 3.8 million. So that's something to keep in mind. And I got that off Finviz, which is where we get our resources for our low floats. So let's keep BIOC on watch. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it does pull back. But when I see a breakout stock, they're added to my watch list. And I take off a couple others that just don't have the volume anymore. And if they pop up on the scanner, I'll add them back to my watch list. But I like using the scanner. I also like using a good watch list. Because the scanner reminds me of stocks that I've played before. And if I took them off my watch list, I can simply add them right back onto it. And say, well, okay, did it get some news or... You know, is this just because it's a low floater or, you know, it brings, it, it, it works the my brain a little bit. And we got a bonus special we're going to add for the last pick of the day. And everybody needs this because they like to shop. That's right. And everyone likes to get a deal. Yep. So if you guys guessed Groupon, GRPN, that's my little bonus play uh, that I'm liking for even a continuation. Now, let me tell you. This Groupon, okay, if you guys were to look at the um, volume over the last, I don't know, let's take, let's go as far back as January 4th. You know, back on January 4th, the high of day was 351. The volume was about 8.6 million. Then it kind of died down. But the stock price, if you notice, kept going up. And it went from high of day of 329 to 351, 355. And it's been holding up 359, 358. Honestly, for the last one, two, three, four, five, oh, about five, six trading sessions. And guess what it finally did today? It finally made a new high. And you know what? Not only did it do that, but the volume today appeals to me because it's got over 9.3 million shares traded uh, so far. And uh, this, you know, pushed through Friday's high. And it looks like there were some block buys on Bond. And, you know, when I looked at the weekly chart, I got to say, I like the stock. I mean, I would take this as a swing trade. So, I mean, this did not, I didn't see this pop on scanners personally today. I don't think Jim did. Did you see it on the scanner? No. I didn't. And uh, so I think the stock uh, is bullish. I'm bullish on Groupon. And I'll let Jim talk about the chart where he sees resistance and some potential next targets and maybe the low support. Uh, but that one uh, is definitely, I don't have a position, but definitely one that I will be looking at a lot closer tomorrow. This, this is one, one stock I didn't quite understand because, one, it, it, it didn't run at all during the Christmas season. You know, and usually this stock likes to pick up about that time of the year. And it just all it did is it, it, it broke from support, which was right around 417. And went all the way down to 280. And I mentioned it a few times as it kept going down. I said, this just doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense at all. This is a season where it should be running. And uh, I'm figuring a lot of people got a lot of money in their pocket from short and Wall Street last year or, or, or something. But it did hit a bottom here around 290. We had a low of 280. And it had a double bottom right here right around 290. In the last two to three weeks, it has bounced up. It's had a very green day every day. 
until it hit the high today of around 387. So, you know, there's different places of support I've got on this stock, you know, like a low of 345. Uh, I just really kind of just don't understand how, how it sold off so hard there in the last three or four months and, and broke that support level. So I'm going to pull this up to the 20 day and just have a real fast look at the 20 day one hour. And I want to remind people of this. I keep reminding people, I said, get your crystal ball out at the end of last year. I said, this is over. The sell-off is over. Find stocks that you like in the past and see where they are. And this would have been a great example, Groupon, because it ran all the way from 290 all the way up to 387. So that's a good dollar bounce in a matter of 15 days. And again, I want to repeat that crystal ball was telling me the first of the year to get, get get ready for a good 2019. I just think the year's just started. There's still a lot of good opportunities out there. But let's look at the pullback. I think support level is going to be right around 358. I do expect this to come down a little because it's overextended a little bit. But at 258 looks like a real good spot to me. And then I'm going to draw another trend line here. We're at there around 371. And I got another support level right around here at 366. But the solid support's going to be right down here at 359, right where that 50 SMA is. Now give me one second here and I'll pull up the daily one minute and we're going to be done with the show. She hit 387 and she's pulled back to 372 after hours. So I think it can pull back just a little bit more. I've got a support level down here at 359, 357, but there's a couple other spots that look attractive, like at 363, and I just want to keep a good eye, eye, good eye out on this, come tomorrow and see what, see what it's going to bring me. I'm going to play action this stock, I'm not going to swing it. If it pulls back and, it's, and it shows some momentum, I'll play the bounce, but I think it's, it's had a pretty good run, and, but we still have a long ways to go. And this is Groupon, G-R-P-N, our bonus pick of the day. We brought you right. six picks today. Wow, that sounds like a lottery. Yep. <laughs> they have when you go to the lottery, the grocery store, they say, do you want to, you know, pick your six, you know, pick your six numbers. So, uh, so that's great. This wraps up the market report. And uh, we hope everyone had a great trading day. And uh, if you want to join us, our uh, information's in the information of the video. So hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. I hope and we have another day like today, but um, don't count on it. Do count the momentum to keep. But today was a very special day for any stock that you were interested in, from Mobot to CGC to all the pot stocks. Bio, I mean BIOC. Uh, I can just go down the list, but I was really impressed with Mobot today. I want to see a continuation on it. And uh, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, January the 14th, 2019. And I want to leave this last message with you that we love stocks.